and gentlemen, we're going to head into fight number nine. Introducing first, from the red corner, Jack Hayes. And here we've got Jack Hayes continuing the action tonight, fighting out of M16 Fight and Fitness, obviously. Under Miles M16, the man himself, traveling all the way up here, the BJJ Purple Belt. His MMA record is two and one with one win by first round submission. And obviously, if he's training under Miles, he's gonna have fantastic striking, which is what these guys are known for. Yeah, what I like about this is uh, basically, he calls out the fact that it's a game of chess, so he understands that this is gonna be a complex game. But the ability of what he brings in wrestling, he is also the under 65 kilo South Australia state wrestling champion. So not only has he got a striking pedigree, he's gonna be able to grapple as well. Like, and quality grappling that will submit directly into the cage yeah. quite well. It's great to see that, that actual wrestling, that so, like obviously MMA grappling is its own thing, but having that ability where you are just talking about being standing from being on the ground in a favorable position for you, that translates so well straight into MMA. Yeah, and his fight style is that boxer catch wrestling style to look for explosive, powerful striking and movement. And introducing his opponent in the blue corner, Cooper Rush. Royal. Oh, where do we start? Cooper Rush Royal. This lad has grown up in the coastal combat cage. He's basically been everywhere and done so many things. Um, this is going to be his obviously his pro debut. So it's the first time making the uh, walk to the cage as a pro. But it comes back with a huge record in regards to being amateur. Eight and two, three KOs and one sub. He was the former amateur coastal combat um, champ champ both flyweight and bantamweight xfc bantamweight champion amateur beast champion for flyweight he's I mean, fought on imax so many times i mean he's putting the royalty in royal like <laughs> yeah the rush royal and that's the thing i really like his style he is a very very unique striker training under valor martial arts and just in regards to he takes a piece of every um, place and uh, training partner where he goes with. So I've seen him train all around the place and he just downloads information so well in regards to being able to incorporate new things into his style. Um, seen him down at co Combat Lab myself a few times, getting that uh, MMA grappling style, which we've seen on display in the last fight. A blue belt in BJJ going up against the purple belt with Jack. So I'm really interested to see how that grappling really works, but this is what the pros are all about. So, Cooper wanting to uh, spoil the party for Jack and uh, put up the win against his name. Obviously, standing in his way, we've got Jack Hayes. This is going to be great. And once again, we're moving to the professionals as well. Three five-minute rounds. Yeah. Give him that extra time to, to kick it over. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, fight number nine is brought to you by Stonegate Legal. We are in the professional flyweight division. This bout will be contested over three five-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 56.9 kilograms. He trains out of M16 Fight and Fitness. He holds professional MMA record of two wins for one defeat. Put your hands together for Jack Hayes. And his opponent in the blue corner, he weighed in at 57 kilograms. He trains out of Valor Martial Arts. He is the former amateur coastal combat flyweight champion, the former amateur coastal combat bantamweight champion, making his professional debut. Put your hands together for Cooper Rush Royal. When the action begins, your referee in charge, Phil Cassidy.
And here we go, the speed. And immediately we, we can see a Southpaw versus Orthodox matchup. This Orthodox. makes for such an interesting fight on the feet. Cooper's able to switch stances as well from that long karate background. And you can see the stances in there now. His legs like springs, just almost ready in or out to explode wherever he wants it. And Hayes, really smart. When you're bladed, as Royal is, it's easy to come in and out, but then that lateral movement becomes a little bit more difficult. Yeah, so moving off the side, making him work for it. Moving the head in case Royal darts in. And that's, I think, and that's where you see, um, you know, Rush, GSP was an example. That's a lot mm. of the style is really in play here. Real linear. Expect explosive movements in and out. So he causes a lot of damage without taking much himself, Cooper does. But at this stage here, Jack is making him work for everything. At this stage, he's just basically getting that distance rate, rate right. The first person wins the distance usually starts to put their flavor of the fight on. Yeah, not wrong. And it becomes much more difficult for Hayes if he's the one that's... I mean, it's been dictated for you. If you're up against the cage, you've, no, you've got not much say in that. Yeah, your, your options for attack are limited from that point. You see, I mean, Cooper's ab ability to evade the, um, the strikes is so quickly out. Hayes doing a really good job, not buying into any of it. Both really calculating. Royal decides to go up top, spins, gives his back up, and Hayes is all over it. Some stern warnings there from Phil Cassidy. Yeah, it just comes down to natural instinct. This oh, stage here, Cooper's 100%. looking to uh, turn around and face his opponent. Really hard knees to the thighs. When somebody's trying to take you down and they, they put that bone against the, all that tendon on the side of your leg, it becomes very difficult to stay up. And then there's another fence grab. Yeah, at this stage, Jack was about to take him for a ride. He has a really, really good quality body lock on place, making it very hard for Cooper to do anything about it. And that was a last warning on the fence grab from Phil Cassidy. He's well and truly giving him the benefit of the doubt. And finally, Royal goes for a ride, and he comes back up, knees to the mat. Yeah, Cooper did a really, really good job keeping keeping up and not actually hitting the ground properly then. Mm. Just being able to jack straight up, which all that work that Jack did is basically uh, put him back up there. Cooper's just holding his neck a little bit. Not quite of any um, any risk at all of a submission yeah, at this Yeah, it's stage. also just breaking his posture, isn't it? It makes the, the takedown more difficult. If you're pointing your head at the ground, very hard to be able to grab onto someone and lift them. Yeah, it's just enough to break the alignment so you don't mm. have your full strength. Yep. And now that he's let go of it, now he's got that, sh that forehead to chin pressure which jack is doing a really good job and again we're in these pro rounds they've got a much more time to work they're still a minute 30 on the clock a lot of time for either fighter to be able to steal this round make it that little bit more definitive yeah at this stage i wonder if they realize they can throw their elbows as well this is where your uh, your first couple of uh, pro fights people forget about the elbows they cause so much damage though Cooper's doing a great job just pushing him up using his forearm just to really cause pressure. Beautiful knee there. He's throwing that first elbow there. I mean, why not? Driving, driving in there now. And you don't need that much room. If you're winning head control, you can replace that head control with an elbow. Yeah, he's using that forearm to drive right up, which is basically restricting the breathing of Jack, but Jack's done a good job to re remove that off. He's definitely working. A switch of positions. Yeah, Jack was waiting for that strike to come and um, basically, basically utilize it to, the, to do the reversal. Both fighters not doing a lot wrong here at this stage. They're just basically working through their sequences. Cooper's just basically trying to stop Jack from going to the bottom. Done a beautiful piece here in terms of breaking that grip. He's got that 50-50 almost in a cow catcher. I really love the fact that Cooper just looked to his corner and going, do I get this way? Like, he's basically <laughs> making yeah. sure he gets it. 100%. That's what they're there for. Your corner sees things you're not seeing, so you can rely on instinct. Your corner can help with this strategy. And sometimes you get in those positions where you're like, hey, I haven't been in this for a minute. He was like, all right, we've got 10 seconds for damage. 
Oh, it's almost it's like a gentleman's agreement. Let's just have... We've been on the cage for a, for a hot minute. Do you want to swing for a second? And they yeah. do. That hook uppercut came so quickly. A good round with both guys having some success in one facet or another. You see, we can see Hayes grabbing on, dragging Royal down, but immediately, like you said, like a cat, boom. Able to get his hips underneath him and come back up again. Whoa! I think Hayes was lucky that that elbow went a tiny bit higher, and here we see him throwing towards the end of the round. A smile on the face of Royal. And here comes that hook uppercut combination so quickly. One and two, and both Whoa. of them just missing. Almost took some of those whiskers off. So they've got the first round download of each other's skill sets. Obviously, Jack's got his grappling, Coop's got his striking. Let's see who actually gets it in place now. Phil Cassidy laying down the law, no more fence grabs. Miles Simpson, such a useful resource to have in your corner. Both boys in great condition as well. Well, that front side kick to the knee, such an effective position kick. Oh, that oh. left hand found a space. And that's what it sets up. It's this annoying low sort of kick that's difficult to read, and then all of a sudden you find yourself anticipating it, and the last thing you expect comes. Up top, bang, straight down the pipe. And from that same entry, he's done three different movements. So he's done the uh, front knee kick. He's done the left straight. Beautiful one-two there. Hayes obliging him, throwing a right hand. Oh, that's oh, hurting. That, that hurt that's him. hurting. You can see the body language. Hayes now looking for a clinch position at least to get some reprieve, but he eats a knee for his troubles right after eating that kick as well. Very deep underhook. I think those left ribs might be a little bit compromised after that. And now Hayes is able to switch to the more preferable side. He nice does little quick knees in that coming up there from Cooper. That's two in a row. That's showing some of that pro smarts. If there's room and you can throw it, throw it. Get some of those points, especially in that body. We're, like, I can't talk about it enough. If you hit someone in the body, they show that they're hurting to the body. Go back to the body, even if it's these little knees. It's all going to add up. We've still, nice got, reversal. we've still got championship rounds after the third one to go. It's money in the bank. And what you saw there as well is... Uh, Cooper threw two knees to the bread basket, and then Jack's head was getting a little bit low, so he threw it up to his leg. And that was the reason that Jack took his head off the center line, and Cooper was able to switch the position. And now we've got open space, that left hand right down the line. Looked him to do that spinning kick to the uh, ribs again on the left side. And it's so difficult because you, you have to respect that stomping like, kick to the knee as well. But it is setting up other attacks. Oh, it makes it left. so hard. He is finding that left hand really well. Straight down the line. It's the distance that's making it so difficult. And that is a beautifully timed shot from Hayes. This has got to be a takedown. But no, Royals having none of it. That was beautiful. Well timed. As soon as he was coming down, he was about to touch the mat. Those limbs just extended and helped him and out. And there was up. a smile on his face. He looked to his corner and gave him a wink. He knows what he's wanting to be here. This is a lot of energy expended by Hayes. He's put a guillotine in place now. He's broken that posture well and truly. Oh, and Hayes almost waited for the knee, grabbed it. And this is where Cooper, Cooper's very, very cerebral in the way he listens to his corner. He's now getting that head position that he was asked to do so. Especially when you're in a good position. Chill, listen to your corner, do the things that you need to do. That's three knees to the bread basket there. And you can see the knee come across from Hayes. It's usually a, a sign that you don't want to eat too many more of those. Yeah, he's got a double overhook at this point here. Jack is trying to get that takedown no matter what, but Cooper's not having any of it. Really good base, no matter where this thing sort of ends up from Royal. Jack's just working away. Oh, that's back up to that, uh, that rib side again. He's finding a space for him. And this comes down to being that's, that's, that smart piece, understanding where to strike, even on your um, back. 
but at this stage, Jack is just trying to find where the chink in the armour is. Oh, he goes for a spinning elbow and gives his back up. Cheeky fence grab from Hayes that time. This whole round, if Royal's in a winning position in the clinch, he's throwing knees and they're landing. I mean, if even when Hayes was in a winning position, he was eating knees. There's just been so many of those cheeky knees coming up as soon as there's space from Royal. And this is that next level which we expect from our pros. Both these boys throwing everything at each other. Very technical chess match here. I keep thinking this is a title fight. I don't know why. I think it's just it's the way that these guys are fighting. So methodical. They're taking their time. I would say not too far in the distant future. Both these boys have got, a, got that in mind. Yeah, 100%. They've got the IQ. You, you can see them chipping away at each other and just looking for that big shot. But even when they're going for the big shot, whether it's an elbow or if it is one of these knees or a takedown that Hayes is trying to get, they're not compromising themselves too much in getting it. A couple of those shoulder strikes oh, that uh, Cooper was throwing beforehand. Very, very strong finish from Royal. Cooper will be happy with that round. It's a very, very good quality one. But in saying that, Jack has still got that grappling pedigree, which is restricting Cooper's free-flowing striking. And then we see that left hand from Royal landing straight down the pipe. The foot position that Royal gets is fantastic. He almost bounces in, gets his lead foot on the outside of Hayes' lead foot, and he's piping him. And there's the spinning kick. You could see as the guard went away, the hips folded in half of Hayes, and a strong finish to the round from Royal. He's just such a master of dictating that distance, isn't he? Yeah, and this on that last attempt there where he kind of almost went for a Superman, wasn't quite sure, that was what set up some of the grappling from Jack. So that's some of the stuff he'll fix up in this round. Here we go into the third and final round here. Bit of a gentleman's agreement there. They looked at each other and they both said, let's go. All right. I reckon they're going to give each other a bit of a double high five or a hug once something's coming here. Straight away, Hayes makes good. Yeah, but Cooper's like, I'm in the, I'm in the center of the cage. I'm not giving you any of that. It's almost a gentleman's agreement to go for it. And then Hayes goes downstairs. Nice ankle pick there. Royals corner asking him not to stand in front and brawl. You're giving, giving Hayes too much of a chance there to land one of those shots on you. Pointing down to the ground is Royal, and then he throws a kick upstairs. Oh, he's hurt, he's, his foot. he's hurt. He's hurt his foot. That's why. There could be a shin on that kick. That's what happened. Cooper pointed the foot. He goes, I know you're hurt. Yeah, like you can see. Foot. There's a divot in the foot, and it's already starting to swell up. And Hayes still throws it. Royal's starting to turn it on. He knows that foot is compromised. So much of the weight going into that foot just creates pain. You can't push off it. Yeah. Your maneuverability, your ability to throw punches, it's compromised. I reckon it's going to stop the grappling against the cage as well because if that does happen, Cooper's going to be stomping on that foot straight away. That's a really good point. So you can see he's not really initiating the grappling at, at this stage and that may be the reason. Yeah, we, we can see an egg on that foot as they're right in front of us. Yeah, look for some foot stomps potentially from here. Or if not, the fake for it and up the knee up the high. You're not making friends with foot stomps at the best of times. That has got to hurt if we'd see one of those foot stomps on that injured foot. There's a bit of an egg on it already. Oh, Cooper's more of a gentleman than I am. <laughs> we, we know Cooper's definitely seen it. He's pointed it out. But this is also stopping Hayes from being able to use that foot and momentum to push off as well. It's one of the reasons why Cooper has this cage pressure. Yep. Oh, beautiful little elbow there. Hayes is just choosing to go. He Hayes realised he's restricted. Oh, him. and that foot! Well and truly, we heard it! And this right here, Cooper's trying to make sure that this is ending here and now. We heard that foot crack. I'd let him up. If it's that bad that he couldn't he couldn't even stand on it, this is almost over. Royal try, trying to put a bit of fanciness on it, but I think just a couple more punches, just a flurry could even do it at this point. At this stage here, Jack is dangerous. His back is against the wall. He has nothing to lose. He can hardly move. 
and Cooper just starts chopping out that front leg. Very patient, he goes upstairs and that kick just lands. Flying knee, almost hit home. No quit in Hayes. He could barely stand up like, like 20 seconds ago. And now he's pressure, pressuring against the cage. Unbelievable. Goes back to the elbow. And this is, oh, beautiful, beautiful oh. head movement there by Cooper. Heart of a lion. Jack is throwing everything at this. Oh, and there's a stop to the knee. And it puts Jack he's, down. This has got to be it. And the reason that happened, and the towers come. Whoa. <laughs> this guy just keeps turning it around. His corner almost threw the towel in. I saw him stand up with the towel in the Wow. I, honestly, I don't blame him. That looked bad. His foot's been compromised. He's eating really big shots. I like to see that when you care about him so much that you almost throw the towel in. Yeah. But this guy just keeps defying the odds. And, what, and, what? and the reason that knee was compromised is because he couldn't move his right foot. The left knee was just standing, uh, sitting right. there. Right. He couldn't take so much of that weight because of that compromised foot. It's such a good point. Man, Hayes. What, what does Royal have to do at this point? We see them break it up. Yeah, Phil Cassidy is seeing enough. He wanted, wanted some more work. Goes back to the leg, does Royal. And Royal's trying to put a stamp on this one, and Jack is going, I'm not going down without swinging. No, nah, he's earning it. That knee is getting compromised. It's almost, what, what, what leg do you use? And one of them's getting stomped. The other one's possibly got that at least one kick. broken bone. That spinning head kick comes through then. If you're Royal, you've got to be tired from the how much pressure that he's been forced to put on Jack, who won't give up. Outstanding by Jack, the heart and courage of him in this sense. But Cooper's just putting on a striking clinic. Absolutely. Like an MMA clinic, whenever it gets up to the cage, he's dominant here as well. Big knee! With 10 seconds left, we're going to see Royal pour it on. If Jack gets to the bell, this is easily a moral victory, no matter what happens. Oh! Cooper putting an exclamation mark on it in the end. Jack is okay on the ground, but man, punishment. Yeah. You got your opponent coming that out was again? an incredible fight. Both boys showing a lot of fight IQ. Absolutely no quit in Hayes. Cooper Royal, fantastic distance management. Never looked in danger. He's saying he's right in front of us as we look at the replay. He reckons he was running at 20%. 30% is scary. If this guy gets to 30%, that is scary. That was a fantastic fight. I don't think he has a scratch on him. Great work, Cooper. Go join your corner, mate. But once again, that just comes down to Cooper on debut. Records he was operating at 20%. Wasn't happy with his performance whatsoever. There is a lot of great stock in regards to Jack from that fight. The amount of heart that he had with what looked like a broken foot, then followed by a significantly um, damaged knee. Yeah. And him still going down to the wire. Add it to the list. And the knees to the body throughout that fight. For and 15 there's that minutes. Last, there's that last takedown by Cooper. Put the estimation mark on the round. It was almost a frustration takedown. Man, there's no accounting for the heart of Jack Hayes. Huge, huge. The, the cage could barely control it. And, and Jack, Jack had the ingredients to win that fight. And once again, we'll go to the judges' decision from this point. And once again, how did the judges see it? So I may be preemptively uh, choosing a winner here, but let's see what happens. Super happy with both gentlemen's performance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. Our judges score the contest 29-28. 29-28. 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision in the blue corner. Cooper Rush Royal. Big win for Cooper Royal, who never really looked to be in danger. 
And again, we can see that foot of Jack Hayes now really starting to explode. The guy kept throwing it. Yeah. That was the crazy thing. We could see that it was compromised. And then I don't know whether he's too tough for his own good or he forgot. But 10, 15 seconds later, we hear a smack and he's throwing it again. I would say, mate, he realised he broke it. What's the point? Keep going at it. 100%. And the crowd's giving him a round of applause as well. They knew how much heart went into that. Yeah, it's fantastic to see that level of respect from the crowd. <laughs> the boys having a pose. That's awesome. All right, I'm here with you all winner. What a, what a great professional debut against a formidable opponent in Jack Hayes, who, who really took it to you. Tell me, how did the fight go for you? Hold on, the real shit. Mitch McLaren, after your last fight, you called me out. I sent the match to every single promoter in the country. I heard nothing. I'm calling you out right now. You live on the Sunshine Coast. I live in central Queensland. There's no reason this fight can't happen. Let's make it happen right here in your hometown on the sunny coast. Uh, Jack, shout out to Jack. That was, that was a really good fight. Uh, yeah, I, I felt shit in there. It is what it is, you know, excuses, excuses. I felt... 15% on a good day in there, but much respect for the fight, it is what it is. I'm sorry for my performance, guys. Well, it looked pretty impressive to me. You go enjoy your win, and uh, let's, hope, let's get that match made, hey? Yeah. After a good performance, Joel, where's Joel at? Where's the boss? I want that title, baby. Come on, get, I'll, I'll get a good performance in, and let's do it for a strap, yeah? Uh, shout out to all my sponsors. Without you, I wouldn't be here. Thank you so much. Very impressive, Cooper. You go enjoy that win and let's get these fights happening.